you don't want to create lots of little elephant graveyards around your little Eden. Because but when you go into the elephant graveyard, that's where that's where change. shit happens. Yes, of and course. you come out of the elephant graveyard, and you person that's where chaos exists. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Arcade Studio Podcast, episode 10. Yes. I get to say it this time. Fantastic. Well done, man. Finally, 10 episodes, you've got it done. There you go. Wicked. Yeah, if this is a test uh, podcast. we got the new lights in. We want to make sure everything's working nicely before you get uh, guests in again. So this is us just shooting the shit again, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've already cool. hit my head on the the new lights twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, seconds. so we now know that you need to put a thing on the th- end of that. A thing on the a thing. A thing on the thing, so that you don't hit your head. Like those tennis balls. Yeah, or just like a bright orange thing that you just see. That's what you usually do. I just like didn't think that you would hit your head. A lacy disc. Yeah, something. <laughs> like a rugged <laughs> lacy disc. Or we just use those yeah, too. we just use that for <laughs> backups and danger. This cable is going to get on my nerves. Well, so, just drop it on the floor. That's fine. It's fine. It, it makes for sh- sonography. Sonography. So, yeah, we've been off air for a while now because um, basically we've had shit happening in our lives that was beyond our uh, control. Our control. And so now we are back. And um, hopefully we'll be back soon with some new guests. We have the Salona del Mobile in Milan this week. So we are organizing with some people to come and talk about the highlights of the thing. Yeah, and then next in week um, we should be getting someone from the Surf and Skate Film Festival. Which is going to be in May, right? It's going to be, I think, uh, from the 9th to the 13th. So oh. if you're in Milan. That's going to be cool. That's going to be really I cool. Think it's interesting. Last year was a really good party, which I missed. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> the good parties are the ones that I don't go to usually. Or the ones you can't remember. So yeah. maybe you did go and no, you can't no, remember. No, I'm pretty sure I didn't go that one. I, yeah, I was... I was a new dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like already last year. It was, no was it already last year? No, it was yeah, it just was, before, wasn't it? Well, it, was, it was in May. Yeah, and Marta, uh, Marta, Anita was born in April 28th. So, okay, yeah. so yeah, it was like a week after. And it was like, not going to happen. Not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so here we are now. What you been up to? Uh, apart from all the hassles. Okay, so I've, um, I was recently... <laughs> In a skateboarding incident, accident. Type oh, that's thing. right. We didn't get you with your cast on. No, I didn't. I wanted to do a, uh, an episode with a cast. It would yeah. be pretty cool, yeah. especially for the people that just listen to it. But um, <laughs> no, I dislocated my elbow mm. skateboarding about yeah. a month ago. And it's still kind of, uh, like, yeah, not 100%. But mm. um, yeah, I saw the footage of that fall. It didn't look as bad as it actually turned out that's to, like you just know. ironic you know or, yeah. or ironic it just like sucks because i didn't even get footage for that yeah it wasn't even like a great like arm pointing in the wrong direction mm-hmm. sort of thing just like a really bad and embarrassing frame at a certain point but yeah but you said so you 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 popped it back in by yourself I, oh. I popped it back in i i think i kind of did the right thing yeah 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 definitely did the right all thing. the the um, the medical personnel and like, the ambulance guys and the paramedics and it wasn't just the paramedics that came like the ambulance came and then that little car with yeah, the, the doctor the doctor the yeah, actual yeah. doctor came and they were like oh shit you popped it back in okay that's good and <laughs> they kind of, it was bad in a way because they treated you like you were fine yeah yeah yeah, yeah so, of course like i spent six hours in the in, emergency. Uh, emergency room and i was like guys <laughs> this is <laughs> i still dislocated my elbow it's not <laughs> it's like, like it hurts <laughs> and it's weird because like when i first popped it back in like when it happened i, f- I felt like this 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 crunch like this wet crunch mm, yeah i was like okay something happened yeah and i've yeah. seen it enough times in skate videos to be like you know mm. okay you better just try and pop it in because I, I tried to move my fingers and i couldn't move them uh, yeah yeah yeah. okay okay and mm. then uh, i was like fuck it just like i pulled it and it went in pretty easy it didn't it, yeah like the pain kind of stopped and i felt a bit queasy and then it was straight so i kept it straight for a while and then when when they came like the the medic the medical emergency squad uh, squad came <laughs> they they made me bend it and they no they actually they didn't bend it they kept it straight right and then when i got to the the, um, the emergency room they bent it i was mm-hmm. like okay that that feels weird and they kept it bent for like six hours right and i i kept the cast for like about a week because it was a it wasn't a hard cast it was just like yeah. one of those um well that two, was your two, first cast no that was my first cast in 21 years well, skateboarding. Or skating, yeah, yeah, yeah. 30, 
35 Five of, of, of life, life. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's annoying like I, I i kept it for a week and i was like oh my god like i'm already going crazy yeah can you imagine keeping yeah. it for longer and then yeah, it just starts itching. Like the first couple of days, it's like, oh, what they, what's everyone Yeah, you didn't get to the really itchy, like two, mm. three week period where people say that they're you know, shoving pencils and. Yeah, I was shoving a ruler in it. Yeah. But it, it wasn't getting unbearable. Like, mm, 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 mm. it's kind of like the sensation is when you have one of those, um, when you're a kid and they give you one of those wool blankets. Yeah, and it's scratchy. And they scratch you, just like, Ugh, get off me, you know, mm, that kind of thing. Uh, but then I got it off and I went back to, to do a checkup and they were like, Oh, you can move your, you can move your hand. You can do all this stuff. You'll see in a couple of hours, you're going to be fine. Mm. I was like, haven't been able to pull it straight yet. And I still have like a bump on it. And this is definitely bone. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. If you can move it, you're okay. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. I'd rather be a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, you'll never be a hundred percent again. Mm. <laughs> this is Never age. be the same again. This is age. It's starting to catch up to you. I'm sure there's a song there. Is it? Oh, it must have been done already. Oh, whatever. And then you went to Amsterdam, right? Yeah, I just went there for work. Um, there's a big conference for um, you know broadcasting and called Promax, and mm -hmm. we were finalists. And it's just you know you you go there and it's pretty cool. You you get to meet other people, other peers, and meet up with people from your from the company that you never see. Mm -hmm. And I met this really cool guy, and it was like uh, which is on like my kind of level, yeah. same level, like my level. He's on my like work level, right. and uh, I've never met him, never heard of, heard of him. It was pretty cool. And then there's a lot of seminars and conferences and you talks see anything and stuff. Interesting. Uh, I saw this um, this one, uh, which is pretty cool because just the way he he spoke on stage. Uh, it was the guy from God damn it, I can't remember the the band now. This is terrible. What kind of music? Pulp. All oh, right. Okay. The guy from Pulp, the the singer and the guitarist from Pulp, and uh, damn, I'm, I hope I got the name right. <laughs> but he was cool because like, everything was going badly. Like the right. the whole talk was just going badly because he had technical difficulties, and he's not a tech guy. And normally you go there and you 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 see people from uh, like technical background and digital background, and they know how to talk, and they know if there's like a a bug on the computer, they know really how to fix it. But he was right. just like. Okay. guys i don't know what to do and he was like so chill about it i'm like i wish i could be like that you know in any situation like he just could like fix it please. yeah just like you know, guys i'm gonna be here I'm just like waiting for you and uh this is awkward like super yeah. english you know and then um who else was there? there was this other one which was pretty interesting about um the guys called sager field or something sager mm -hmm. felt i'm just fucking up all the names but it was like a, he's a designer from Austria and mm -hmm. he, the whole talk was on uh, why beauty matters, mm. which is really cool. Cause like everyone normally just goes kind of, especially nowadays, it's kind of like everything's beautiful. And he was going on the, on the line, the track was, which was like, not everything is beautiful. Right. There are some det predetermined things that everyone thinks is beautiful because they are mm -hmm. genetically beautiful. And he did like some tests which are definitely kind of, you know they've already been tested or like on many crowds mm -hmm. but um he showed you like how many like seven shapes okay. and he asked the whole crowd to vote on which one was which one was the the most beautiful and the next slide was exactly how everyone voted all oh, right okay and i was like oh, like i voted for a triangle which is like the third or the second most beautiful one mm. what's the first the circle th the circle mm -hmm. the circle and then he went to colors and was like which is the most beautiful which is the worst Red. And uh, everyone went for blue. As the most beautiful. As the most beautiful. And then the, mo the ugliest was brown. Yeah, I can get that. And the ugliest shape was a rectangle. Okay, it's boring. Boring. And then yeah. the next slide was like architecture, all the brown square, like rectangle buildings. I was like, this, you see this everywhere. And exactly. It's like so boring. And that was really interesting. Um, just like, I don't know, just, just the way he put it. He had a, a real opinion on it yeah and he backed it up with some uh with some examples which is, which is perfect it's interesting it was cool i can't remember his name like exactly but well we put it on that uh, under, underneath yeah yeah definitely under here somewhere yeah i don't know we'll see under here under, under the audio under Spotify. the audio. <laughs> yeah so that's awesome and then uh, what else and what did the guy from pulp talk about 
when when he could. He was talking about um, basically how he got into music and the subject matter of his songs, which was okay. really cool because the music I I had never I heard of the band, but I never heard the music before. Mm, mm, mm. I'm and uh, he he's he's he played the first song he ever played live when he was a kid. <clears throat> Excuse me, and. Um, it was just like pretty terrible, but the, the 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 idea was there for the the songs that came later. Okay. And he he went also into um, his look when he was a kid and where every look came from, like where his uh, glasses oh, came right, from. Okay. So he really why. Like yeah broke it down because a lot of people they're like, oh, this is my personal fashion, and they don't really want to talk about no he that like, kind of stuff. But that, it's really interesting because everything you put on, unless unless you literally like just wearing the first thing that comes to to your your hands that you pull out the closet and you never bought clothes in your life like but who actually does that like nobody really no, but even in in that case you, you still have the the stuff you use the most in the front yeah because this is something that you comes know. in and wash gets washed and there's a t-shirt in the back that you never use mm. so but um it, it's all comes from somewhere you know yeah, yeah. like it's you have uh your music reference or your movie references or your icons or whatever and I think it's like really interesting and honest when people are like, yeah, you know, I dress this way because uh, I'm a big fan of Amy Winehouse and so I do the big bun in my head and, you know, that kind of stuff, the beehive and whatever. It's just like, rather than just going, oh, this is just my personal style and this is what I just thought up with this morning and it's like, that's just, just a blatant lie because like yeah. nothing yeah, you know, yeah. comes from like from nothing, nothing. In, in the end of it, mm -mm. at the end of the day. So everything is kind of stolen. And yeah, re reused, or in, reused and recycled, and yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I think. Well, I was talking to Matt about this the other day. Is that um, she was like, "Yeah, you know what? The thing up to a couple of years ago, there was a definite sort of like trend of style of the way people dress. Now it's like all over the place. I mean, there is still like some things that like you can recognize groups. So there's a group identity still, but the." Um, the medium person, the person that isn't really interested in fashion that much and they're not interested in music that much, you know, just the way that people just normally dress is all over the place. There's a person who's dressed a bit more 70s, a person who dresses a bit more 90s. It's like, it's become such a big mix and match now mm. of all these different styles that there isn't like a real, so maybe the style of now is just like this big mix and match of just like taking from what you like and just wearing that. Yeah, and, and that has been um, transformed and it's transcended into the video and, and photo um products that, that that are actually produced i mean if you look at not i think I'm, I'm gonna pretend like it's a statistic but just going off the top of my head of my head like 80 percent of videos i see are all multi-format they yeah. all have like picture in picture like there's going to be some glitch there's going to be some vhs there's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. some hd there's going to be some slow motion there's going to be some uh 16 millimeter eight, eight all in one like 30 second promo Mm -mm. and you're like okay but do you think that's just to like completely freak people no. out no that's just the the style you want mm -mm. um to put everything in one little thing yeah because you want to meet as many people as like everyone has their own but do you think that's just to make everybody happy that's just like if, if we put all these mm -hmm. things in then we're going to get a much wider audience or is it is it the style because people are literally that's ex that's exactly what they want to do i think it's just the style it's mm -hmm. it's uh like a modern take on not choosing a style mm, mm, mm. and doing like some stuff is done badly on purpose and it's just like a whole mix and it's kind of like what you're seeing everywhere else like if, when, in milan aside from all the beige coats that we that you see like in the yeah. last couple of months uh, which is maybe it's the biggest easy. like yeah, yeah like the style that you see um everything else is like you see people with uh jogging pants and you have all the sneaker heads and you have like the whole skate scene is has like gone straight back to nineties. Yeah. Like in everything. And you're like, fuck, you know, I wish I could have had like when we were looking for this uh, this kind of clothing like eight years ago or nine years ago, you couldn't find it anywhere. And now it's like you find it everywhere yeah. and it costs like thirty percent more or like yeah. even more. It's like three times more. And you're like, uh yeah, you were wearing like slim ass jeans three months ago. People and now, can change, right? Yeah, no, no, but it's like you see it when, when it's like genuine, you can see it normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like you see, and it's just following. Yeah, a trend. when people are following, and then uh, you just see a whole like array of these filmers that are suddenly 
dusting off their old VHS cameras. Yeah, and big time. I'm so over that already. I, I like it, but I mean, it's like, you know, it's I like just to see it, but it's a gimmick. Exactly. That's, that's I mean, what we're talking about with Furkino is that there are, there are some things that I feel are just, you use it because it's cool, but it's a gimmick. And mm. it's really uh, like, if you take that image and you shoot it on another camera, you know, it's not going to be the same image mm. and it's not going to have the same impact. Mm -mm. So, okay, fine. You chose the tool for the job, fine. But th then, if it only stands on its feet because it, of the the support that it has, then it's not as interesting as the image should be, no? Because mm. I think it, an image should be look really good on film, on digital, on a screen, on yeah, paper. Yeah, the idea should transcend the, everything. The idea should be stronger than than the, than the medium. Mm. And then, like the, the way you shoot it or the way you capture it is simply the way you want to show it yeah but exactly it's not but that's exactly what i was that, that what i mean is that um in the end all these brands look the same they all yeah. look like palace they all look like supreme yeah, they yeah, all yeah. look like uh like even gucci which kind of they do it i think they do it kind of well yeah because they do this really well, they do yeah they do amazing they, they're very amazing they do like these kind of 90s but mm. it's really really like precise clean yeah even if you don't like the subject matter it's or whatever. It's so expensive. Though, it is so expensive, stuff. but it's done properly. That's why it's, that's why it's done properly. Because yeah. you don't want to buy a shitty like mm. $3,000 jacket. Yeah, I mean, exactly. But so, I mean like Montclair, <coughs> like we spoke about the Montclair, the Montclair video. Really good. And that's really cool. But it, it's, it's a really cool video. Like if you know who did it, because I, I know the guys, like not personally, but I know the brand behind it and yeah. the director behind it. I know what they normally do and they normally do that. Mm, 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 mm. but it's still you get lost kind of but it's still getting lost and doing a cool product it's weird yeah, because yeah. it's not like the just cavalli ad campaign they just just put a skater in it and mm, they had really badly made shoes and you can see the holes in them in the commercial yeah it's, it's so like bad a, that, that happens when they just don't put budget into the thing yeah or just like thought or yeah, whatever but it's it's usually that it's usually like um there, there's somebody that has to do like 10 jobs instead of just the one and because they've they've cut everything off all the budgets all, all the corners off it's like okay the video the backstage guy can do the videos and he can do the gifs and he can do this and this and this and then the video comes out it's like oh okay yeah but i mean like yeah. they, you can you can get and a then, multitasker and then, and then it's like massive no, but even a multitasker you, it's, he's gonna fuck something up yeah but not the main commercial mm. I mean, you can you can fuck up the, the yeah, rest of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but it's just weird. Mm. Like, what happens there? It's like, obviously, somebody wasn't looking, or or they said we need to do it in two days, and they ended up doing it in one. Um, you know that kind of stuff. Mm. You just cram everything in, and it's like, oh shit, we see the, the, the shoes of holes. Ah, oh, we can't do the shot again. We need to go on to mm. the next one to get it finished. And otherwise, you're going to go into mad overtime, and then everyone's going to hate us. Mm, and everyone did yeah and nothing changed and they still exactly. sell a lot of exactly. <laughs> they exactly. still sell a lot of shit and you know people that, that want that stuff they're going to buy that stuff so that's 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 the other thing like at the end of the day are you really bringing in like this is like completely counterproductive to what i do for a living but do you really bring in more new clients like i can get i can understand h&m and zara and azos and that kind of stuff doing like um big commercials and that kind of stuff mm. because they 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 just selling all the time all the time and every 15 year old is going to go and buy that stuff all the time mm. but when you're like a massive brand isn't it better to just do like one amazing like product of of like com like like brand image like brand image like a year you just do like one book or one like tv thing like a an ad which is like with fireworks and shit like that and it just looks amazing rather than spreading out that budget into millions of little capsule things that you're going to put on instagram for like a week and then it's just going to disappear and mm. no one's going to look at it again like i want to know how much revenue each instagram thing produces because i've got a feeling that it doesn't do that much you, they need to do it because people want to mm, constantly be like alive in, alive yeah. with the brand you know they want to be like putting likes and they want to do that and it's cool but are these people actually gonna buy no, especially the we, high fashion stuff i think most of the of the revenue uh and the sales come from like i'm 
I keep on going back to skateboarding, but it's the thing I know best. Yeah. I mean, the skateboarders, especially the young ones, are rocking Gucci and uh, Versace. Yeah, but like, but but they're doing it because they see other skaters doing it. Exactly. Not because they saw the the, of course the commercial. So it, you see it because it's cool. So most of the stuff is coming from external sources yeah, it's, that you it's have no more coming from. Uh, like a rapper wears it, and then all exactly, the, yeah. the fans of the rapper wears it. That's why, like, I oh, but because he cl- liked, but he not because, yeah, not because he's being paid for it, but sometimes, many, yeah, yeah, you, yeah sometimes. Of, most like often they they get given something, mm. and they're gonna it's like wear this, and they, or like here's two hundred thousand rap about it. And mm. If if the rap is good, it's fine. It, it mm. looks organic anyway. But that's why with certain brands that I work with, I've been like pushing so hard. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Just get it into like somebody's hands, but someone like really, really cool. You know, get them like that's how you're gonna build a brand. I think Mm-mm. you know, just get people to wear the stuff that, but not like the the fashion blogger that nobody like really gives a shit about that. Yeah, that's, that's kind of been inverted now. Like if you see a fashion blogger with that, you kind of like yeah, it's like uh, oh, yeah, you know, obviously she's being paid to wear that. It's like come on, mm. like she didn't choose to do that. So you need to get it into like someone's hands, but not like. It needs to be somebody like with gravitas, you know, someone that's just like, you know, I'm wearing this and I'm rocking it. Mm-mm. Like, fucking, what's her name? Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, any, like insert any rapper's name. Yeah, like yeah. anything. Or even like a rock star or like a movie star, but like someone that, that, you know, like I would get Keanu Reeves to do stuff. You know, he's like the, the guy who everybody's like understated and, you know, he's always like helping people out in the subway mm. station and whatever. I saw that like, video as well. Yeah, no, he's just like, he seems like the nicest guy. Like the other day, apparently, he, they, they got stuck in an, the, the plane had to land somewhere rather than where they were supposed to land. And then they were stuck there for a while. And so he took all the people that were on the plane with him onto buses and they took him around the, the countryside for, for a tour. Cool. You know, that's the guy that you mm. want to have your stuff on yeah, yeah but no, not Keanu, like a, Keanu Reeves is awesome <laughs> he's an, I, he I, I have like a love-hate relationship with but him. I think he's had like a really tragic life though yeah I don't know I think I like his uh, sister had like I don't know mm, like he had be. mad family problems and then like uh, his girlfriend all this all sorts of stuff yeah but he just seems like like he's done some of my favorite movies and then sometimes I'm just like Oof. well you have to risk some yeah like uh one of the worst movies Oh, oh, not movies, but interpretations is when he does uh, Dracula. Yeah, no, it was he horrible. That, that terrible uh, English accent. Yeah, that was shocking. Just like goes into you, American. Can't do it. No, he just he's he's got to be. Uh, I saw this one video like um, quite a few years ago. I can't remember. I think it was on maybe on Cracked dot com, mm. or Could it was be. one of the. I don't know. Wait, there I was there was one on Cracked about Keanu. Yeah, with the the neutral face. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was really cool. That was like really insightful. And then they became like this really crappy like s- s- website, and everyone left actually. Like, I think. Yeah, because they were really good. I, I used mm. to watch them all the time. Like Michael like Swaim. And yeah, yeah, he they had were, like mad drug yeah. and alcohol problems. I can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could see that, especially the alcohol. I wasn't sure about the drugs, but I was mm. sure you like. Or well, maybe I just made up drugs, but whatever. But you just had that look where he's like he drinks. Mm knocks back a few and he's done a, a podcast as well but he's interesting he's a really yeah. funny guy those guys are all hilarious uh, the guys, mm. I, there was that one I can't remember his name the little super nerd Dan O'Brien Dan O'Brien was good but the other one the even more nerdy one the super thin one with glasses Alex uh, yeah Alex yeah Alex I can't remember his, his surname but he Sh- Smith 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 maybe Smith maybe something like that and he, they were just like, he, they had like five or six different personalities, all very different from one another. And they really played well off each other. Mm-mm. Like, what was it? The one that they, After Hours. After Hours. Brilliant. That was like one of my favorite shows. Yeah, yeah there were some of those shows that, I mean, uh, if you're really into pop culture, like that's kind of what got me a little bit more into script writing and Mm-mm. trying to do stuff because they looked like they were having so much fun. It's kind of like the... I don't know. It's kind of like a Kevin Smith, Tarantino yeah, type thing, yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. a series and it's kind of friends as well. It was done really well, and then like the the matter was really the, yeah. the actual. I think at one point though they sort of ended. They finished the the, the strong subjects because once you've done Star Wars mm. and Lord of the Rings and uh, Game of Thrones and Spider Man and Batman, like your pop culture at one point, which like the the really big pop culture that everybody just knows instantly what you're talking about sort of does come to an end 
Mm. It's not like we've only had it since the 60s, like pop culture, really. Yeah, but I think it's there's so much stuff you can get into, but I, I think it was more of a, a change in management. Management, yeah. They started going a bit more They were political. Comedy Central, no? No, no, no. They were just, uh, they used to be, it was used to be like a magazine. Funny or Die. Yeah, I don't know. And then I Something think with like all it. this um, political uh, left yeah. versus right, you know, all this Trump, Trump, uh, they were going very anti-Trump. It became like just that and everyone kind of just left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it got a bit boring. It got a bit boring and um, it just too biased as well. It was cool because it was unbiased. They were talking yeah. about pop culture and that's it. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if I want to look at, um, I don't know, like a more leftist uh, stuff, you look at John Oliver who does like a lot of good stuff. Yeah, and if you want to do look at right wing stuff, which you should do, you should look at both left yeah. and right. And that's the thing, also, is like right wing is all just like instantly categorized as bad, and left is instantly characterized as good, mm. and that's just silly. Yeah, like, and then I'm and then so over all this stuff. Yeah, I know. I stopped like looking at a lot of stuff, but like on the right, on the right, you have like Stephen Crowder, louder with Crowder. On the left, you have like John Oliver. Yeah, and like totally, like almost to the extreme. And then like at a certain point, you're like, okay, I can't. I can't, can't make up my mind anymore. anymore. Let me just watch some Hitchens. Yeah. <laughs> and these yeah. Hitchens, you know exactly <laughs> like, where, he stands. where he stands. But it's like, but you know where everybody, they all, you'll know where they all stand, I think, at the end of the day. It's just, it's... Yeah, but you don't know if it's it's because they've been asked to do that because like the, the platform where they're on, that they're on is... No, I think they, they, they've been hired or they're on that platform because they have that Those kind of views. views yeah. I think. Yeah, I guess so. That's just how it is. But it's it's interesting to watch them both. And John Oliver sometimes freaks me out. Mm. And sometimes I think he's hilarious. Or like also our boy, Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Like he's like, I think he's he's hilarious. I don't, he's become not so funny on the, the, the Daily Show. Yeah. Because he's become more serious. And like his stand-up was, I thought it was really good. Mm-mm. When he was doing like the stuff that got him onto the Daily Show was really good. And I think just having to produce so much funny all the time, mm. he's not quite get, ever got into that rhythm. Mm. And, and he has to work with the, the writers. Then, and he has to work with the writers. But of course, but I think he's like, he's on board with that. So I don't think he's fighting against him. No, no, no. I mean, just like he's, when you work with writers who have worked with uh, like Jon Stewart for so many years, yeah, they're gonna obviously have that kind of like it's gonna take a few years before they switch. Yeah, onto they, your style they get onto the style of how he also delivers. And I mean, but I, I still I find him like hilarious sometimes, and then sometimes I'm just like, oh, jeez. And then like the same thing with with even the the guys that are a bit more on the other side, like Crowder. He's I think like of the people that I will listen to. He's the most on the right. Him yeah. and Ben Shapiro, but Ben isn't like he's more political. He's more political. He's not. Yeah, a and they're both like kind of. I mean, and Ben maybe is a little bit more. I dare say, open-minded. The, a li- yeah, maybe a little, he's bit, a little bit more. Um, not not level-headed. Level-headed. He yeah. actually like listens to what the other yeah. side, and then he might destroy them. Yeah. But at least he's listening. Uh, Stephen Crowder is a little bit too arrogant. Yeah. And some of the times you're like, okay, dude, but I mean, just like, like relax, you know, a relax a little bit. Not everything is a is a leftist attempt to destroy. Yeah, the exactly. World. That's the thing. And that gets a bit overboard, and then I just start like binging mm-hmm. on uh, Arrested Development or mm-hmm. Curb Your Enthusiasm, and at least I know exactly what I'm getting. And yeah. it's getting like some cynical bullshit. Yeah, which that's makes the me thing laugh. At the end of the day, cynicism is I think the way forward. Yeah, this is the only way. I think <laughs> everything should be you know, just cynical. like. Absolutely. But uh, when you said after hours, I was thinking about talking about this before, um, that there are some shows that might never get the recognition that they that they should get. Like, have you ever seen uh, Colin Tough Crowd with, Tol- with Colin Quinn? No. Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn. This was an amazing show. It was like on Comedy Central at, mm-hmm. at night. I only find it through YouTube because I was binging on... Um, uh, Opie and Anthony, and then I got into Pat- Patrice O'Neill, mm. and then Colin Quinn, which is like an amazing, super amazing um, comedian from New York. He, he, he was I've the, never heard of him. The, he's the bad guy in Crocodile Dundee. And oh, he takes okay. up a knife, yeah, yeah. and he's like, you call that a knife? He's the uh, the punk guy. He's this is a knife. Yeah, yeah. And he's like he's like yeah. he's like the, the like the the punk that that's trying to yeah. mug him. And he's done like, like a shitload of movies, actually. Like I, I didn't know about it, but he had this sh- like political show where he would invite all his like underground comedian friends, which are like they weren't mainstream, mm-hmm. but they were like some of the the strongest and yeah, like, most fact. representatives. Patrice O'Neill, um, 
Kevin Hart was on there before he got big. Uh, Jim Norton. Like, uh, Jim Norton. A whole lot of like these awesome, awesome comedians. And they would just like talk about it like uh, sub- like subject matter that was relevant at the time. Mm-mm-mm. And it, it's amazing. Like you just check yeah, it out. It's watch it. super awesome. And it was just like four guys talking. They had like a living room. And um, like I kind of said, it was filmed live. And but they did another thing like that recently. It was the Gervais did it for HBO with him. Mm. And um, but this was much. It was like yeah, it was the start more of like that. hardcore. Yeah, and yeah. it was really raw. And, and they weren't holding back. Like mm-hmm. it was just like oh, it's like the green room pulls out. And it was better than the green room. Oh no, I have to see it then. It was better than the green room because it was just like really hot, and they all knew each other. So the comedians would really like bitch on each other like and they would like they knew exactly where to there's nothing funnier than comedians just like ripping at each other and mm. no one was better than that than patrice and bill burr and bill burr and the, i think God, there's an episode they were both so of funny those guys i was watching the there was i think it's open anthony where um patrice and bill go at each other because mm. like bill said something and patrice wasn't happy about it and Dude, it is so funny just to watch mm. them go at each other and you just like learn Tenders. a lot about like how you also learn some comebacks as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you, know? you remember that kind of stuff. That's super cool. God damn it. Yeah, I, was, I watched a good, uh, the special a Patrice O'Neill one, I think from 2005. Elephant in the Room. I think it's Elephant in the Room. So funny. Right? Maybe it's even later than that. I think it was like 2009. Mm. It, was one of the, it was either 2005 or 2009. Did he have like one of those yeah. fedora hats kind of thing? Like Rocky hats. Can't remember. Well, he was just like right. sitting down. No, no, he was standing. He was definitely okay. standing. No, but it was it was just like he was so funny and just like ripping at everything. And then he's like, uh, you could hear people heckling him, and he would just like rip into them. Mm-hmm. No, no, brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant. like everyone considered like all those comedians consider him like the best of all time. Yeah, because he wouldn't. A lot of the material wasn't even prepared. Mm-hmm. It was just like because he was so into his idea and his philosophy that yeah, because he, he was just like funny the way that he mm-hmm. would like put things away. He wasn't writing bits as much as yeah, like, was just, just like, talking. He could, he's like a kind of Dave Chappelle. Yeah, and Dave Chappelle was just like built more business minded. He seemed to be a bit more anti anti everything and that's what kind of destroyed him but i mean Mm-mm-mm. there's a uh, very few people i can i can go back to him and just like listen to the same thing yeah, over and over my I'm God, like, he's just like he just goes for it and it's like it's it's so raw that mm-hmm. it, that you it'll never get old yeah it's you know? like always going to be so much fun to watch but there's him and there's bill burr and i was watching actually something really interesting was um ari shafir defending Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Mm. Like, I don't know if you guys must know Louis C.K. He, he had a bit of a problem <laughs> <laughs> where he would ask if, uh, his friend comedians if they would watch him jack off. Mm. And then if they didn't want to, they could they would leave and that was fine. But otherwise, they would stay and watch him jack off. And, mm. and he got pulled into that whole, like, Me Too, Me too thing, yeah. big time and got raped. Now everybody is just like... Um, hitting him really hard because of his shows that he's doing his comeback shows slowly slowly slowly, Mm. trying to work on his material and well I don't know I find him so funny yeah he's he's like I at a certain point you can if you have a a head on your shoulders like and you like you're not just an ape who's like believes whatever everyone else says or you can at least think a little bit for yourself you Mm. can separate some things from like if someone's a, a serial killer but yeah. he's still funny yeah, yeah uh, i mean he's funny. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know i mean if uh osama bin laden was a good stand-up comedian even if he like organized the death of like countless people i might listen to some of his shit because i thought it was funny yeah it's not like you can separate the two, the two things if you have to like everyone is a dickhead yeah everyone has done terrible shit yeah, some people have yeah. done worse shit than others. Of course. But, and it's it's also a matter of like context. Like when did he do it in his life? If he was like telling jokes while the planes were flying into buildings, then maybe he's not so cool. But if he was maybe starting off as this really funny stand-up comedian, something happened in his life, he freaks us out and then he goes and does something terrible. Like you can separate those two things. I think that's, w- that's where the separation comes from. Yeah. It's like, what is this person doing at the time that he's telling those jokes? Like now with people going back, the, the director from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy that he's been fired yeah. from the third one because he was making jokes 
years ago about something. I think oh, it was about yeah. kids. Like or something, I can't remember exactly what it was. Mm. It was either racist or like child abuse or something like that. It like context has changed in the years, so maybe something that was like absolutely 100% fine 10 years ago mm. now isn't. But if you're listening to something or reading something from 10 years ago, you can't judge it from with the, with, the, with what we believe now mm. because obviously at the time that was okay, mm. or if it wasn't okay, it was at least accepted. So. Mm. you can't do well, people that. would complain less also or, no I mean. yeah but apart from that i think it was really like if you don't complain then it's okay no mm. it's accepted that's how it is mm -hmm. so if if now you tell me this is wrong if anything i do from now on that is that then it's wrong mm -hmm. no but before you tell me it's wrong you can't like mm -hmm. you know if, if before i know that a red light means that you have to stop and i don't stop yeah but i mean if I'm on a plane that gets mm. hijacked yeah. and I'm scared shitless and one of the hijackers says something funny or farts or does something and I, oh, well. I, I'm going to laugh. Probably. I'm probably going to laugh and I'm going to be like, <laughs> 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 whatever. Like, I mean, like, you, laughter is going to happen automatically. Yeah, in the worst places, of in course. The worst places. But it's okay when you're laughing at a shitty position. It's, like, it's, it's always a problem of, I think Kevin Hart put this really well. It's like when... The people, when, when, when you're punching up, it's okay. And mm. when you're punching down, it's less okay. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're like a little man going up against the man, then it's like cool, 100%. Underdog, yeah. yeah. When, when you're punching down, you have to be really on your shit. It's like, you know, when CK talks about uh, people who can't read good and that kind of stuff. That, then like the read. <laughs> no, we can't say that word anymore, apparently. So, oh well. But uh, hey, retards. That's it. <laughs> we just said it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but I, I can't remember the actual joke. But, but yeah, I, mean, I mean, he goes off about that, or he's not actually talking about people that that have a mental problem. He's usually talking about idiots, and he's like, "You act as if you do have a mental problem," you know? Yeah, but I mean, so that, I that's it's so twisted. Like you have to. You have to explain everything and you can't explain everything. People don't live like that. Yeah, of course. And now, I, I don't know, I think people are just so used to complaining and it's harder to actually listen to something and think about what you've just heard and just say, okay, yeah. maybe it wasn't, yeah, I didn't like it, but who gives a shit? Like, you know. I think the, the best thing, we need two things. Like one thing that's come out a lot is a road to redemption. Like if somebody says something wrong, there has to be a way for them to be like, look, I said a stupid thing. I'm really, really sorry about it. Um, and then, like, there has to be a way back because you can't just make pariahs of everybody just because they said something stupid. No? Yeah. People but say I mean, stupid at, things. At, on, on this point, but w how much do you think, because we were talking about um, before, we were, get, we were starting to get into the whole thing that you don't, you, you don't have to sell to everyone. Yeah, exactly. Like now this is the other thing I wanted to We're in a position to. where... Every brand, every comedian, every actor, every filmmaker, everyone can kind of get Little to niche. their target. They yeah. can get a niche. So if you say something that gets a, a lot of people offended, yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure that your fan base is going to be a solid one. If you have, if you have a fan base, not like this show, but if you yeah. have a fan base, they're going, to be, they're going to get your back. Probably, yeah. Okay. But it depends, like how far you've pushed them to these oh, fringes of, course, of society. Yeah. And how, because the further you are to the fringes, the more people get like aggressive and violent course, and uh, yeah. whichever way they are, it just doesn't matter. It, so you don't want to have like these groups that are pushed away to the corners of, mm. of the room because that's where shit ha really yeah, ugly yeah. shit happens because then they talk to themselves and they have these little echo chambers and they get fucking freaky. Little speakeasies. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's much better that people speak out in the open mm -hmm. and then i think people that you know like like you're saying you have your fan base people support you because you've got you know they come to your shows or they watch your tv mm -hmm. thing or whatever they buy your music and the people that don't they just don't and so you don't make as much money as you would make i think yeah. that's how it is at the end of the day if you want to make all the money yeah, but you're, you're gonna be like kevin hart yeah i mean you know but like, he's squeaky clean and, and exactly. then they get to a point where you you have to be it depends on how you want to live if you want to live at that level and try to be as clean as possible it's just gonna 
It depends on how you are as a, as a person. Yeah. And yeah, if, you, if you can do it, then then that's what you must do. If you if you want to be like super edgy and like a death metal band, obviously if you if you're playing Norwegian death metal, you're not going to have three billion people wanting to see or listen to your music. You're going to have like hundred thousand probably. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how many people listen to like or like Enya. Like everybody's got an Enya CD in their house, but I don't know how many people actually listen to it. I don't know how many people actually say they do. Ah, uh, we have one. I know, but I mean, like, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know where that CD is. Ah, uh, it's in uh, the, the 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 CD pack. I got the, over that pretty quickly. Yeah, well, I mean, every like, we put it on the other day as a joke, and then like by the you just left it on. No, no, by the second song, everybody was like, "Oh, you know what? Actually, oh, I forgot. This is actually quite a nice period." You know, yeah, but that's relaxing. a whole nostalgia thing. And then after like the third, it's like, "Okay, no, 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 that's enough, bust." No, no, no. <laughs> can't take it. No, the long songs as well. Yeah, they are. But yes. yeah, but you know, like the work you do will be followed by certain people. And then if, if the people that like what you're saying, then it's good that you know, you, you're you going to have more possibility to say what you want to say. Mm. And if there's less people, you have less possibility to say what you want to say. So the market will decide if you can or can't do something. Yeah, definitely. But it seems that a lot of the times it's not the market that's deciding that no, you have to actually, apologize. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's like, okay, fine. But because sometimes you do need to apologize. Sometimes you do, yeah, but okay. like a lot of the times it seems that it's just kind of forced, and then the yeah. But I mean, if you if you fuck, if you fuck up, then it's it's right that you know you can't just be they, they can't just push you to the corner because you're going to bring your fan base with you to the corner, mm -hmm. and then they, they, that's going to become again at the dark corner where Simba must never go. You know, mm, the elephant graveyard. Exactly that shit. You, you don't you don't want to you don't, you want to you don't want to create lots of little elephant graveyards around your little Eden. Because but when you go into the elephant graveyard, that's where that's where change shit happens. Yes, of and course. you come out of the elephant graveyard, and you person that's where chaos exists. That's where chaos exists, and you you're okay. in. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but but you don't want too much of that you, no, no, you want you want to have like some of it no no but it's good it's like that's how it is it's like you do want some of it because that's where you're going to be put to the test mm -hmm. but like in in this kind of context it's like the, the, the more these are they're around the more these little groups are becoming fomented and they, they're just getting pushed more and more to the corners whereas you want to try and keep these people in like okay you fucked up you can even do like a three strikes in your art sort of thing you know like we'll we'll you become an elephant graveyard after you fuck up again, you know, like mm. what's the, what's it saying? Uh, fool me once, shame on you, mm. fool me twice, shame on me, you know? So like I fuck up once, I'm going to say, look, I'm really sorry for what I did. And then I, there must be a way that I can like make it back. Unless like, obviously if I've killed like 20 people and like, you know, raped children and whatever, then maybe not so much. Mm. But if you think that like somebody who does that, gets released like for good behavior after like 15 yeah, yeah, years definitely. or that kind of stuff mm -hmm. you know like people that like that have killed people or have stolen millions or whatever they don't even serve out their full sentences and then like someone who makes a bad joke is like instantly forever like yeah it's, i out. think it's it's very it's very concentrated on um at the moment on comedians yeah, I think I think we know it's concentrated on comedians because we listen to a lot of comedian shit. Probably, yeah, I guess yeah. so. I think but that's uh, our little echo chain. Because, I mean, that still doesn't change the fact. I mean, like, if you look, Bill Cosby, it was like one of the, the craziest yeah. criminals, uh, like sexual criminals of Ever. the 20th century and 21st century, 20th, 20th. also the 20th century. The, Mainly the 20th. I don't think he was doing much in the 21st. I don't know. You never know. Oh, uh, Maybe something. But uh, if you listen to some of his stand-up, even in that period, he was probably doing a lot of this shit. And yeah, but it's got, like, it becomes really dark though now. Yeah, you, but it's still, sort of it's thing. still like, it, it's still like, you know, it's, it's still kind of funny. And I mean, that, that's, that's, all, the that, words, that's all I'm saying. you don't look at the person. Exactly. You know, like if, if you're looking at a stand-up show, you're not looking at, or, or a movie or something, you can kind of, you can, you know, you can separate the two things. Yeah, but when like Bill Cosby goes, ah, they can't listen to the rap music lose them the brain damage then you sort of like yeah but you're giving them the pills that is giving no, them the rape damage yeah but i mean that's not the, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not on kids it was, it was women yeah no, first still, of all but i mean like, it's terrible but i mean you know it, it's still uh, it's a jello body pop I mean, whatever i don't know <laughs> i can't do this his voice but um yeah i don't know it's one of those things it's like a weird um 
situation. It's like also yeah. like now that the, there's a debate about Michael Jackson, you know, after the, the, yeah, the documentary, the, the documentary came, out, came out, apparently Leaving Neverland it's called, but apparently like now the director, he's been like raked over the coals because a lot of the information that he pulled out is like his, the official biographer of Michael Jackson has brought out documents that is like, it couldn't have happened. Like the, one of the kids was like, Oh, I got, I got, abused in the train station in 1989 and the train station wasn't built till 1991 oh, you know? okay. so there's lots of facts that were like thrown in there and then like in 1991 he would have been like 17 or 18 or something like that so it was weird that he would have been there mm. so it was just like a lot of and, and the guy seems to be a pathological liar the the the, the main mm. witness of that thing but now so the, the guy who did coney as well like was i don't think i don't know i don't it know if it's the okay, same guy. i can't remember because they're coney 2012 no yeah, there was something weird that about was that weird. one. That was weird. But anyway, at the, at the end of the day, it looks like the the, 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 um, the discussion has been, so is it cool to play Michael Jackson's music now that everything has come out and he's like this massive serial child abuser? And yeah, it's like, you, yeah, you can. But at the same time, I I personally, I'm a little, like I was never a massive Michael Jackson mm -hmm. fan. But when it comes on, the first thing that goes to my mind is, oh, okay, hang on a second. Billie Jean Jeez, is man. not but I mean, my... Like, but that, okay, but that's because it's more recent. But it, think about all, like, the bloodshed that has been... Yeah, but these guys weren't making spilled. jokes. And, like, I mean, if, if Genghis Khan was telling jokes right, while massacring, like, a third of the population of the world, like, it's a really... Sh or, like, Hitler, you know, is, like, making jokes... I'm pretty sure he was a good stand-up comedian. I think he must have been hilarious. But still, yeah. like... It's really, it becomes really hard for me to like be, okay, I'm going to listen. Like there's so much other good stuff to listen to. I'm not yeah, going yeah, to no, look but for it, that. But it's like, it would also just be interesting to see. Like, I mean. No, no, interesting as far as like a historical document. And I'm probably going to laugh, of course, because you will laugh. If, if, if something's something is funny, funny, you're going to laugh. But you, I think it, you need to have the context in certain cases. You need to know that that is what that person was doing while he was doing that. Mm -mm. You know, and then you can decide if you want to listen to it or not. Because, like, unless that's what I'm saying, like, redemption is good if the person has done like a stupid like mistake or something like that. If if he's done like massive, like, yeah, but who decides on the ma on on the severity of the fuck up? But that's what I'm saying is like it needs to be something like illegal. Yeah. Okay, that's a good measurement. No, but if, I mean, if you make it if you do something illegal, then then okay, there's a justice system. They take care of you. Uh, you're presumed guilty, uh, innocent until proven guilty. So you get put through a process. If you come out of that process and you've been proven guilty, then that's bad. If if there's no due process, then I'm sorry, no. Like I'm not going to put up with that. Like if you say I'm something. I can't prove to you that I'm not that thing because I can't prove a negative. It's impossible. For, if you say I'm a racist, I'm, 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 every time I say I'm not a racist, it just sounds like I'm, I'm just being like, I'm fighting against it. I'm just being like, oh, you know what? I'm actually not. And the more I fight against it, it's like uh, the more the people are scratching the, that, that scar and it seems like you're more and more and more just super defensive. And it's like, oh, you must be a racist at that point. So, but I have black friends. Three. Four, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that that uh, that doesn't mean that mean you know. I know it's just a joke, but yeah. I mean, you know, some people say that seriously. No, no, but, of course. Maybe they're, they're anti-Bosnia. No, something. of course, but that's you know. that, that's why. Like for me, the line is: is the thing that I've done legal or illegal? Basta. Okay, you. I can't um, like kill things. I can't like people. I can't steal things from people. I can't like. Um, drive on the wrong side of the road like there are things that i can and i can't do legally and then there are things that make me a shitty person or a nice person and if i want to be a shitty person and insult like thirty thousand people that it's up to those thirty thousand people whether they want to listen to me or not but, yeah, but don't you think it's like not, a lot of the time it's people outside of that clique that gets yeah they, they that get gets offended, more offended but that, that's why i'm saying like and if, they if, try to defend the people that are maybe are, are fine with it like yeah, that's a very common. But then uh, the people that are fine with it need to speak up. Yeah, they should, but maybe they just don't give a shit. And then, then, either then, way, then your your fan base isn't strong enough to defend you. No, but it's not a fan base. If you insult someone, yeah, that's outside your fan base. Like you make fun of uh, forty thousand elves. Yeah. Okay, and the elf community is like, uh, oh, 
You can say whatever you want. I don't give a shit. And then some dwarf is going to be like, you shouldn't say that to elves. And the elves are like, who gives a shit? Yeah. You know. But then, then if it's just one voice, that it'll be drowned. If, if it's like a lot of voices, then it's... Yeah, but a lot of the up. problems have come from that, though. Yeah. Like the one person that it just spreads like wildfire. Yeah, no, but that's the problem with like Twitter and that kind of stuff mm. is that it just spreads out. And that's why it needs to be... Like if I say a stupid thing that offends a lot of people, I have to be able to say, look, I said a stupid thing. But I, I can't be banned from Twitter. I shouldn't be like thrown off like whatever, like my social media and stuff like that just because I've said something stupid that offended some people because it's not all people that I've offended first of all and then if I apologize then that's one point in my favor first of all if I do it again then maybe we can talk about it but that's how it is and then if um, if instead I decide that to own it and I'm like well I said it and I stand by it then the people that are offended by that can block me and not want to listen to me and that's it yeah, but that should, that should be, that's how it should be yeah but that, if people like think like that it would be fine but that's that's why we should just talk about this kind of stuff and, mm. and like maybe more people will think about it but the thing is is that people want you to think like they think all the time mm. so if you got like the vegan crazy person is like no everybody needs to be vegan they might be right it's like okay cool maybe killing cows to eat them isn't the best thing in the world I like them they taste really nice mm. so like what can we do about mm. it like you know, at the end of the day you think it's going to save the planet if everybody becomes vegan I doubt it because there's going to be other problems mm. first of all I read something really interesting is that to grow like biological like bio crops and that kind of stuff without we harming the uh, like uh, pesticides and that kind of stuff you need a lot of animal manure oh really yeah you need to like be able to like fertilize the fields and stuff like that right where are you going to get the animal manure if there aren't any farms like dairy farms and stuff like that because these animals aren't going to exist anymore like it's not if we stop farming tomorrow and we leave these animals free okay most likely something's going to happen and, and that nature's going to like sort of balance out the herds and it's going to become to like a stable sort of number. Mm. Wolves will take some, the cold will take others, especially like the, the animals that come from like farms and stuff mm. like that, like big intensive farms. They don't know how to live in, in the nature. Their hooves are all fucked up. They're not, they're not animals that have been bred mm. to roam the prairies. Like, so probably the strongest will survive. The, the most, excuse me. Not true. Ooh, the most, um, adaptable will survive and the others are going to just peg mm. you know okay cool they're going to feed some wolves and lots of them are just going to rot in, in the field because there's going to be so many of them and then what are we going to do we're going to roam the prairies with a truck picking up manure so that we can feed people mm. now i'm not saying that intensive farming is good i'm just saying that we can't do both things probably mm. and just like be like okay get rid of one and then everything's going to be like no, well, the extremes never work out anyway exactly. and then i have a real uh, i still think that uh, plants are living things yeah of course and they are living things and probably we have no idea of knowing how intelligent they are that maybe they're screaming the shit out of their leaves yeah exactly who knows who knows i mean they get eaten by everything they get eaten by everything they have been always eaten by everything and they probably get eaten by other plants as well yeah i mean i'm not that i'm not so quick to jump on something and just say yeah we should eat this life form because they don't have eyebrows and they don't have vocal cords and they can't tell me how much they're screaming exactly like fish they kind of look at you like like that you know yeah no of course i, I mean, mean it's like we're all life consumes life life consumes life That's either way is. so unless we start making uh <laughs> like yeah mm, i don't know like but, um fact not factory grown but like laboratory laboratory but even shit. that comes from like the, they've done now um, uh, what's it killing free meat mm. where they grow like meat from stem cells mm -mm. it still comes from something mm. you still need to get those stem like cells a lot from of somewhere. like little life forms in yeah there. exactly and then it's like what you know well, I don't know it's maybe like, eat it's, the shit from the matrix it, the gruel but that's pro I'm sure there's something Definitely. in there because otherwise it's not nutritional so like even if you just take compounds and put them together it's like it comes mm. from something. It needs to come from somewhere. Yeah, you just like keep like, on getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a never-ending cycle. But, uh, 
So I don't know. It's it's one of those problems that's too big for me to figure out. What I think everybody just needs to do is figure out their little piece of mm. of land and their little piece of of the world, and then make that as perfect as they can. And hopefully it'll spread and out. Hopefully, and then the next person does it the same thing. And if everybody sorts out their shit in the northern hemisphere, as the southern hemisphere sort of pulls themselves up slowly, slowly, they have to have the chance to like do all the shit that we did before to bring us to the richness where we live now because we have live in the most amazing period of time ever. Like for everything, we've got like everything you could want is just like phone call away. Mm. The guy comes on his bicycle and brings you tacos. You don't even have to call him. You don't have to call him. You just like push buttons on the phone, you know? Uh, you don't even push buttons. You just, you just like run your hands over a screen mm -hmm. like magic. And then this guy comes along with a yellow bag and he's just like, here you go, tacos and beer. It's like, fantastic. Thank you, my man. Off you go. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's like a miracle. In the meantime, there's a guy in Malawi that's house is underwater and it wasn't even a real house. It was well, the like guy from hunt. Malawi is the guy who brought the food. No, he didn't make it. <laughs> it's too far. It was like raining. No, but, but I mean, yeah, no. So we live in, in a sort of paradise and then these people need to have the chance to like go through an industrial revolution and of some sort like they, they're lucky they don't have to put up all the shit that, that we did in Europe so they probably won't have as much of a shitty time of it It'll, they'll skip lots of steps like, all the like the um, locomotives <laughs> yeah you know they, 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 they can they've already got technology the steam so engine they're just going to go straight to the to a step which is more convenient for them there'll probably have to be production so there'll be like pollution and all that kind of stuff but more than here that's why china is crazy mm. but like china is already working to like they're going to be much better than us in a couple of years time mm. because they're, they're they realize that you know beijing is like smog central and everything they want to clean up their air and so they and they're totalitarian so they don't have to work with people that'll be like no we don't want this and we don't want that they just be like we are doing this now. we are doing this <laughs> this is what we're all doing everybody's happy yes you're not happy i'm um, sorry for you Wind farms in your farm. That's what you're going to be producing now for the rest of your like days. Like, boom, done. Next week, wind farms up, and then. But that's how it, that's that's how it works in a totalitarian states. That that's why Italy was built, and that's why we have highways in this country. Is like we wouldn't, and in Germany as well, we wouldn't have it if people couldn't just say, "Look, we're just going to draw a line through these people's fields, and we're going to steal their land, and this is a highway now, and like everybody has to be happy about it." Like now you've got to like make everybody get on board and then there's going to be people fighting and there's going to be riots and there's going to be this and there's going to be that mm -hmm. and you can't get anything done, which is good. It's not like a bad thing completely, but that's why there's, there's less progress at the end mm -hmm. of the day. There's less infrastructure getting done. But So anyway, so the, the, the places with the totalitarian state is probably going to like, especially like not, not all of them, but like China, which is like totalitarian, but they like squeeze, they're like, flirting with capitalism sort mm. of thing and they want to like sort of they like you know they want to have a good standard of living and whatnot they're going to be i think quite interesting yeah they're killing yeah. it yeah they're going to be like way ahead of us in a couple of years time mm -hmm. with like green energy and all that kind of stuff because they also see the business behind it they're, they're seeing the business yeah. of course they want to sell us their their, their solar panels that are like 50 times cheaper than the american ones and just as powerful or whatever these lights like god damn it these are little fucking led lights that i spent like next to no money on from china they're they're really really good they work beautifully their build quality is excellent they run on batteries they run on the mains it's like and they cost next to nothing you get the same thing from a european supplier and it's like stupidly expensive mm -hmm. It's like I know a child made them, but hey, fine. This is exactly goes against uh, what you said before. <laughs> it's like you know it's bad. Every time you look at that light, you should be like, I know. I'm oh, like, fuck, this man. is like, come on, dude. Well, you don't know that he did like, such a good baby. job about it. You don't know that he, kid he, made it. He, I don't know if a kid made it, but if he did, he's like a master craftsman. Mm -mm. But there's like these little little tiny screws, which I can't keep, quite get my hand in. So either it's a little kid, or it's like a girl. Oh, it's a robot. Hands. I don't think it's a robot. No, no, no. Robots are still too expensive. Robots are Japan. Did you see China. the new one? The Boston Dynamics? Uh, the little one, the cheetah. Nah, the humanoid. Ah, I didn't see the humanoid. It does like, uh, it jumps up steps. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I did see that one. We're all dead. That is fucked up, man. <laughs> that was like Terminator. You see when he, like, he runs yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah, field, I'm like... I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. It does backflips as well. Yeah, it's the one it's like quite bulky with like yeah. little arms and little legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I saw that. No, this is like, that, that is scary. They put a brain on that thing, we're fucked. Mm. And Siri. then it's like, it's weird because you see it, it's super lifelike, but it looks like a video game kind of thing mm-hmm. because th- there are certain points when it moves its arms or like th- it gets into the position, like the maximized position yeah. and it doesn't move anymore for like three or four frames. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, st- stops, stops, stick. It's like all calculated and that like freaked me out as well. I don't know. Those things are scary as fuck. You're going to get like very close to the T100. But you know, that, that's exactly it. Like it's Musk that says like these things are going to get so quick mm. that we're not going to be able to see them. They're going to be like running around us and they're going to kill us without like without us knowing what's happening. And then you put a brain in that thing like into artificial intelligence and then what's going to happen? Yeah, like hopefully you get like vision from the Avengers. Yeah. But you're not no, going to get not that. Gonna, there's no magic. You're going to get the... You don't have magic in this world. You're going to get Ultron. It's just going to be just people just getting slaughtered by robots in the streets. Cyberdyne systems. Then the thing is, they're not going to be even funny. Like Funny Bot from South Park. Yeah. I am funny. Well, he was actually funny in the, <laughs> in the show. <laughs> so let's see. Like, that's going to be scary as fuck, I think. We're going to see that probably. I hope not. We're going to see some... I hope I'm going to be very old when that happens. I actually don't, don't know. want if, I don't know. If there's going to be like an Armageddon, I'm hoping it's a robot Armageddon. Yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah, but it's better than a meteor. I, it's know, these like, I just keep thinking, to die. Every, t- every now and again, I think about like end of the world shit and whatever. And I always think, I'm South African. In all the disaster movies, people end up in South Africa at the end of the day. You go back to where you came from. We're just going to go. I'm just going to go back there. And that's going to be like, it's far away from everything. We got all of Africa between us and where things are going to be happening, unless like it happens very, very far in the future and Africa comes Dude, up. If if we're, if it's a robot Armageddon, yeah, but you're going to be like they're going to be swimming over here, like yeah, but they like they they they've got a, quite a way to go. So maybe mm. you can you have a bit of time, maybe like five seconds more. Yeah, it could be. I think I think you'd be a bit safer there. There was actually an awesome book, which I wasn't able to find we have been looking for it for because i don't know what it's called but it's it's a story it was written in apartheid south africa and it was i think my history teacher told me about it district nine no 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 (laughs) and it was basically it was um a theory of what would happen if the united states invaded south africa for whatever reason Mm. Let's, let's say they needed to invade and whatever and it's super interesting because they were like, oh, well, th- there was like actual tactics in this thing for like how to defend um, the, 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 the Drakensberg mountain range, which sort of like covers all of the coastline. Mm. Uh, you would move all the people above the, the Drakensberg so that any like invasion from the sea would have to like come up to these mountain ranges and then the Boers would just like kill everybody. Basically, that was the idea. <laughs> but it was super interesting. Like there's like a sort of little fortress because you got like, desert on the one side then you got like a river like a really the Zambezi river mm. is it the Zambezi river the one that goes from, well anyway I think it is well anyway on the northern border there's like another big river um, with the Victoria Falls and all that kind mm. of stuff is it Victoria Falls well anyway big, big fuck off river on the north and then you, and then there's like nothing for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers and then you got like the highland and that's quite defensible in their idea so these um, Afrikaners like, were like, yeah, we can take him. Don't like worry Wakanda. About it. Yeah, it is. It's Wakanda. South Africa is Wakanda. Without the technology. Uh, but we have, you know, that's the thing as well. It's like South Africa had like, during apartheid, because they, they took away with sanctions, they couldn't buy weapons from anybody or whatever. They, they've developed like an amazing um, research and development uh, facilities. Is the Nell Aviation. Danel is like... Um, they, they do weapons and they do aviation and they do like tanks and stuff like that. And um, they're, they're like top class. They're like Boeing. They, they do like amazing things. Do you know if South Africa has a space program? Uh, I don't think so. Not like Brazil? Mm, I don't know. I don't think. Not, at the moment, we don't even have electricity. <laughs> Is it still going on? Yeah, yeah. There's been big load shedding this year because apparent, because we're close to the elections, I think, and mm. people are fucking up. It's like SNP? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. 
It's very strange what's happening at the moment because f- like last year, it didn't seem so bad last because it happens in the summer mm. when they need more air conditioning and that kind of stuff. So the year 2018 summer was like, okay, didn't seem to be that mm. bad with load shedding. This year, there was like lots of surprise load shedding. Like people didn't know about it and it just happened and all of a sudden people were with no electricity and stuff for a while and then it would pop back on and like happiness. So, well, so it's weird. So on the one side, you got like this massive, now I think semi-private company, I think it's like semi-government, semi-private mm. that makes like Apache style helicopters and like some of the best guns and like artillery weapons and tanks and all this kind of shit. Mm. And on the other side, the government can't even keep the light on. It's like hectic. Oh, damn. Mm. Anyway. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a crazy country, that one. But I still think it's the best place to be if you're going to be in Armageddon. I don't know. you got to pick your... Where would you be? I like uh, the city. I've always liked the, the destroyed city scenarios in video games. So you'd say in or the Or Vietnam city. style, like jungle style. Oh, okay. That would be pretty freaky. Just but, see like so, these, so you like, would just like stay in the city and hope for the best? Maybe. Yeah, just like... Like Will Smith? Not like Will Smith. That wouldn't last like a second. I wouldn't be playing golf yeah. <laughs> over New York like the Hudson. I don't know. I mean, like, but I'm just saying, I, I don't know. It just depends on, it would be pretty cool to see that you're just like, holy shit, it's fucking Terminator. You yeah. Know, or whatever. And then die. And then die. You're like, okay, fuck it. You know, I don't really mm. know what happens afterwards. But I mean, if it's going to be, if you can pick your Armageddon, it, it would, you know, yeah. the meteor could be pretty cool, but it's like by the time it gets yeah, to the atmosphere, you know what, you're fried. With, with our luck, we wouldn't even see it impact. We would be we on, see on, on the other side of the planet. Probably. But you would we, see like, uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you would see like whatever. But I mean, I would, if I want to, if I want to die from a meteor impact, I want to see that fucking thing hit. Yeah, that would like hit me right in the yeah, middle of the face. Just hit me. It's like you're coming, you're coming, whatever. Okay, yeah. so I want to see that. But it could be pretty cool. Like you ever see um, what's that movie? Melancholy. Mm-mm. It's like about the um, the last days or like the last months of a planet coming into contact with the Earth. Mm. You never seen that movie? It's pretty Mm-mm. good. It's it's a really good movie. And at a certain point, it's like um, this father creates this little. He make he bends a a wire into a circle mm-hmm. and he's like because you see it you see like the moon oh, okay. and, and you and start seeing his planet and he, he kept on like making it bigger because like he would show his daughter he's like look it's it's not getting it's not getting bigger than the circle you know oh right okay oh that's and at a certain point it's like <laughs> this <laughs> big like, and she's like, like hey I'm motherfucker dead. like what are you doing <laughs> and then at a certain point you just see the impact and like this whole <laughs> and it just like finishes yeah. it's pretty it's quite a cool it's depressing yeah but it's it's called melancholy yeah <laughs> But I mean, uh, I I want to see that. it's just like a cool, like a cool movie. And then, um, but I don't know. I'm again, I watched a Netflix movie the other day. I've, I've decided that I'm not going to watch Netflix movies anymore. Mm. Yeah, they, 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 there's something not quite right with them. It's they, low budget and HD. Yeah, I don't know. I think that I, w- I watched this one with, um, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, like something Frontier or something Border. And it was with, um Brad Pitt um the guy from uh, from Narcos Peña from mm-hmm. Narcos and um the guy that plays the the pilot in Star Wars uh Bo Yeah Bo Dameron, Dameron. That's the name So was it with Brad Pitt I don't know but there was like one Oh no it was um Clooney but anyway it was like a big Big actor, like, like Hollywood big, actor. Like important yeah. actor. And I was like, okay, I'm sold on this movie. I'm going to watch it. So we, my wife and I, we got into it and we started watching it. And the beginning was super good. Really interesting. Super, super. Who was the fucking actor? I can't remember. And anyway, so like you get into it. And then what happens in every Netflix movie, there's like a long period of fuck all happening where obviously the writers are on holiday. And then there's like nothing happening. There's, there's like, like Boris. Then, and then there's something happens at the end. It's like a bit of action and the movie is like closed and there's like, that's it. And I was watching a podcast or, or something that they, they were saying that Netflix uses algorithms to decide what, what the next movie and TV series is going to be. So because people like mm. movies with 
Bo Dameron, the guy from Narcos, and this other major actor. They from, put them all together. They and put them like, all together. They're like, okay, you guys are going to be our our cast. And then what do they like? Okay, they like um, Narcos style scenery, and they like stories about drug trafficking. Okay, cool. So they're going to be in a jungle, and it's going to be drugs. And then they just here they they change the. Um, they were in Brazil rather than somewhere else. The fucked up thing was that everybody was speaking Spanish in Brazil. Mm. Yeah, that probably fucked you up. Uh, that was like, well. I was like, why we're in Brazil? Hola, que tal, tío? Yeah, exactly. Like, like real Spanish or like, no, like South American like, like South American Spanish. So like Mexican Spanish, you know, like, exactly, like narcos and that kind, of, that kind of stuff. And I was like, what? Hang on a second. They're in Brazil. Why are they speaking Spanish? Anyway, so that was that. And I was like, oh, it was with Batfleck, Ben Affleck. Mm. And like, I was like, oh, for fuck's sakes. And then like just silly things happened in the whole thing. And it was like, okay, act two, scene four, oh, this happens. Okay, fucking that's it. So like nothing, mm. there was no the substance. Up, there's no like- substance, there's nothing like underneath it. And then I watched the other one, which was again a Netflix movie. And it was sort of the same thing. It was like, again, big actors, super interesting like cast and everything. And I was like, okay, you get hooked in. And then, oh, it was with Woody Harrelson, and um, and he was. I wanted to see that. It's it's quite fun. It's a, it's about Bonnie and Clyde, the guys that go hunting for Bonnie and oh, Clyde. Oh yeah, exactly. Ed, yeah. Uh, Ed, not Ed Harris, the other guy, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, Kevin Costner, and uh, bloody Woody Harrelson. And you think, oh, this is going to be an amazing movie. It's basically True Detective in the 1920s. Uh, I thought so. Uh, okay, uh, same sceneries. Like that, like Texas. A little bit like, Cohen Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. Super, like, beautifully shot. Like, it's always shot with that sort of, like, Netflixy mm. feel to it. And then it's just, like, a lot of nothing punctuated by something happening every now and again. Mm. And it's just like, okay, so now this is uh, gangsters. Okay. Click gangsters. Big cast. Okay, cool mm. cast. We like Woody Harrelson and we need to put Woody Harrelson with somebody who's a bit like, you know, like his, his opposite. Okay, rather than Matthew McConaughey, we're going to put in check. Okay, cool. Kevin Costner, so you get like an old movie yeah, star that's exactly. nostalgic and get exactly, him back. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Mm. So I think that seems like what, what's mm. happening with Netflix is that the, 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 the scenes get thrown down by the algorithm and then the writers come in and sort of fill in the gaps and mm. they're like, here you go, let's make the movie for like no money and go for it. Yeah, I think they spend a lot more money on... Um, they spend all the dire- budget on the on the actors, I think. On the actors and I think maybe on the um, director of photography. Well, I don't, to make it I don't look even clean. know. I don't even know like if... The, the, like they don't... I haven't looked at the names of the director of photography, so I don't know if they're like the guys that do the movies, director mm. of photography or... they're they, all like uh, really beautifully shot. And they, they, it feels to me like guys that would do like advertising. Yeah, probably. So I think... It, it would make sense if you're using an algorithm. Yeah, so. exactly. It's like, like here you go, this is what we want. And these guys come in and are like super clean, mm. car photography, you know, that kind of stuff. Beautiful. Boom. There we go. Mm. Here's your little Netflix movie, one hour, 20 minutes, clean. Mm. And then like if you're into it and you're like awake the whole time, then it's like, because obviously you're watching it at night before bed, blah, blah, blah. Then maybe you like get to the end and you're like, okay, but like that one there is something missing. It's such a cool story. It's all very interesting. But there's like some bits where you don't understand like how they get from point A to point B. There's like mm. big plot holes. It's like, why do they know where these guys are the whole time? Why are they getting around? They why probably are have they- like some junior copywriters or screenwriters yeah. that just like work for sure. nothing. Is there they, something uh, quite wrong? The, probably the screenwriters that work for Netflix or like the Chinese kids that work for the Chinese yeah, companies. Yeah. They're Could just be. like, just like, they just want to be in the business. Yeah, exactly. I don't think okay. the Chinese kids want to be in the business. No, I don't know. <laughs> I think they're, they just don't like, they're just working. Yeah, anyway. So yeah. That, that, that's why Netflix is for me, like their actual series, like HBO is much better for like TV shows. HBO is probably the best, like Showtime the best. and HBO because mm-hmm. they actually have like really good, uh, really good stuff. I mean, like Kirby mm-hmm. Enthusiasm is HBO, yeah, like yeah. all the good the good series well the Game of Thrones is HBO mm. I've never seen Game of Thrones yeah. I don't really get into it 
Yeah, but it's, I know it's good. Everyone says good. It's like it's too amazing. many people say it's good, and yeah. like, uh, I'm not a contrarian. But um, I just haven't had the time to actually sit down and watch it. I've been watching. But the last season is uh, coming now, so maybe just wait for that to come out and then just binge it all together. Just binge it and just yeah. like I know it, it's all been spoiled. Yeah. Know? Anyway, so you know what happens, but, but it's um, still it's still shocking when you yeah. watch it. But yeah, I, I've like, just been watching Arrested Development lately. I've never seen it, mm. and it's just, it's like sh- randomly shot. Yeah, that was really good. But it's though. really it's the story really is good. Well. Yeah, and you're like, damn, like even Brooklyn Nine Nine, it's generically but shot. But it's, it's sitcom. Not, yeah, it's perfect, like old school. But it's really written sitcom. Well, exactly, and it's got the punchlines in the right spots, mm-hmm. and everything is good, and it's all like tight. It's it tight, works. exactly. It's clean, but it's mm-hmm. because it's written by comics. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's it's like clean. It's, so that's interesting. But like Netflix, I've, I've like I think that they did House of Cards that was really good, Narcos which is good, and then I haven't seen any new ones oh, that I've enjoyed. There's quite a few like good um good series. Yeah, but I don't know if they if they produced them. Because okay. what I found is that the Netflix produced series aren't that good. Amazon Prime, on the other hand, with like The Man in the High Castle. Have you seen that? No. That that tell, that's the story about if, yeah, the if story, Hitler yeah. had won the war. That's like really like well produced and put together, S- strong storyline, everything. American Gods, brilliant. Mm. Like also really like strong storyline. It's really much more interesting. I think they do a better job on that kind of stuff. I think they put in more money. They probably like have in more production. money as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so cool. Netflix is um, looking to buy a cinema, like a theater, like uh-huh. a physical theater. Yeah, but that's what they're doing now. Amazon's buying bookstores. So they were, they're going to put, like, again, like physical bookstores. But they, are they going to keep it, like, as a... Like, I know there's this trend that they're doing also in skateboarding um, in the industry is, like, big companies are buying smaller, sh- like, shops, shops. Mm. but they're keeping it. They're not changing the name. They're keeping uh, it okay. like that. Uh, I don't know if, well, how they're going to be doing it. Uh, that would be free. That like, could little, be re- like little mom and pop stores. And then yeah, they, and just, like, support them, oh, like, make them cool. work. That would yeah. be really cool, actually, like... But it's nice to have physical bookstores. So if they're disappearing yeah. and Amazon comes in and keeps them alive somehow, but it's like they're taking over like the whole everything, mm. basically. So it's like a big monopoly. But um, so that's quite interesting. But it's like, what is that? The, the, the guys where I go skiing, this is very similar to what Amazon does. I go skiing in Val di Souza and um, Via Latte is the, the compensario. And it's basically. Uh, an agglomeration of like four different ski areas that have become one. Mm-hmm. And they started by taking away like ski lifts that brought people to um, refuges where that the owners weren't part of the, con- of the conglomerate. Mm. So if you had a, like a, you had your little refuge, your little restaurant on the top of a mountain with a, the, the ski lift right next door to it, that you could, like the skiers would just pop off and come and eat at your place, they would just move it away until you had to close because people couldn't get to you without walking through the snow to get to you, right? So then Jesus. they would wait for you to close. The second you sold, Take they would over. put it back again. And then, because th- there was a reason why that ski lift was there. So, mm. you know, it was serving some things. So they would have moved it a little bit. It was uncomfortable to ski. You'd be a little bit pissed off. But th- I've seen it happen like three times. And one of the places where we go often, which is a little refuge, which is a bit further down on the slopes, and they can't really cut them off, but they've tried as much as they could to do it. They, they're always like saying, no, no, these guys are just trying to fucking kill us because they, they, they want to have... That area. They want to have everything because you you earn on the food and beverage more than you earn on the ski passes. Because mm. if because otherwise they can't keep it all alive and open. Or the Bombardini and yeah, the exactly and all that kind of stuff. So they they basically climb in. They've taken over everything. They close off the the, the thing and you fucked. And that's what Amazon does. That's what they've they, they've, they've done. They, they've slowly slowly taken away the the this distribution from the stores. And now they're like, okay, but we want the stores because it's interesting. Brick and mortar. It's exactly brick and mortar is more um, profitable. Tangible. It's also like, um, especially in a time where people are going back to like nature. And yeah, like they want to touch the books and then mm. they want to smell the books and all that kind of stuff. And maybe you can have like a pickup point for your stuff, mm-hmm. so you don't have to be at home all the time, and you can just pop in and pick up your mm. your goods. And so. Like now, they, that's what they're doing, basically, just schneiding. And you're also getting real estate that way. Yeah, I guess if they're buying the real estate. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's did, pretty did crazy. Did you see what uh, Jeff Bezos' wife made? Twenty-five no. billion dollars oh. from the divorce. Oh, they got divorced. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I think he, he fucked around or something. But who? And Jeff Bezos, the owner of um, Amazon. Amazon. Jeff Bezos. George. Jeff, I think. Jeff Bezos. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And um, yeah, so she she just hit the mother load basically. She's become, I think, the second richest woman in the world like this from nothing. Because basically, he started Amazon and he was already married to her. So, so like, she's, part, so, of so it, she's yeah. part of the, like her support. Without mm. her support, he wouldn't have made Amazon, basically. So she was like, uh, she could have like half, the, half his money. Oof. Ooh, that's painful. Half is a shitload of money. No, half, He's like a 50 he, billion... Oh, it must be 50 billion, I guess. I think it's worth more. It's so, a lot of spaceships. So then, be sending exactly. Up. It depends also like how much, like from what part, of, well, what is his money? Like, is it, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, of I don't course. know, whatever. So I don't know exactly what, how they did that because I think he makes, he's got more than 100 billion, I think. Mm-mm. Anyway. I mean, on Jeff Bezos' wife, I think we can call it a night, eh? Yeah, yeah. Give us I mean, $25 billion. Give us, yeah, but first we have to divorce somebody. Give us $25. $25. <laughs> 25 cents. 25 cents. Yeah, don't give us Follow anything. Us. Follow us now. <laughs> hit God the subscribe damn. button <laughs> and hit the alert button just because otherwise that's what people say. What? To hit the alert button. Oh, is that what they say? That's yeah. what they say. That's what people that do podcasts say. Like hit the alert button because apparently subscribe isn't important anymore. Oh, really? Because the alert, um, you can be subscribed and not actually see what the, that it's going to be online. If you alert, you hit the alert button, you get like the email that we're, we're online and stuff. Yeah, just click the little triangle that says play. Just, 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 just watch just us. Just please, please watch <laughs> us. But if you've seen, if you if now, if you got into this, you've watched us. So thank you. Awesome. You guys are awesome. You, you are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in the promo. Right. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers.